Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. There is turmoil in the United States, but there is a complete change of weather in the Middle East. And we're going to the Middle East immediately tonight. Profound events of these last 24, 48 hours. It's not like a catastrophe or warfare. It's a change of leadership in Riyadh. Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom, Malcolm Honline, Conference of Presidents, Major American Jewish Organizations, joins me. Not that Malcolm is never well informed, but last week, as I recall, as he was departing, he was saying that he was concerned about Riyadh and the leadership because Prince Mukran, who was then the Crown Prince a week ago, is considered a sturdy ally. Correct, Malcolm? Yeah, right. And Prince Mukran is now departed, and there's a new Crown Prince, Muhammad, who's of the Sudari clan. And the Sudaris, who have been in power for a long time, this is one of the seven brothers, and King Salman is a Sudari. The Sudaris are associated with conservative religion, the Wahhabists, and also with. Uh, fervent nationalism about Saudi Arabia and prosecuting against Al-Qaeda and against Iran also? Also. Also. So, the change of the guard changes the whole atmosphere, which is why we're very pleased to dragoon Daniel Pletka. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we draft Daniel Pletka. We invite Daniel Pletka uh, to help us right now. Dan Daniel is at AEI and everything needs a new interpretation. It's like the map has been completely turned upside down. Somebody took the chessboard and swept it away, and we've now got new pieces on the board. Daniel, a very good evening to you. This, you will follow these connections. There's a change in Riyadh, and Riyadh is in a surrogate war with Tehran in Yemen, but also in Syria. And the focus here tonight, we begin with, what does the change of leadership in Saudi Arabia mean for the prosecution against Assad that the Saudi Arabians have favored these many years? Do they accelerate the prosecution? Do they back off? Is there going to be a transition time? A very good evening to you. Good evening. You know, I, I think that what's going to happen in Syria is that the Saudis are going to double down. They've been working pretty closely with some of their other Gulf allies, and they're pushing pretty hard inside Syria. And if you want to look to why some of the rebel forces not associated with ISIS have been gaining ground in recent months, you should look to Riyadh to understand why it is. That's going to be their policy heretofore, I think. But we've seen, the, in fact, Saudi Arabia lining up with Qatar and Turkey now, uh, according to reports, uh, rearming the rebels, providing them uh, with uh, uh, quite a significant amount of weapons, which some attribute to the uh, successes to. Do you see this as a strange alliance, a strange coming together of the three? Is, is fear of Iran also a driving force in this? Well, it's important to remember the Saudis and the Qataris despise each other. They've got a border dispute. They are uh, they are mistrustful of each other, and I think the Saudis have viewed the Qatari government as a bad actor in you know recent uh, in recent memory in the Middle East. But I think that they've decided that they have a larger enemy and a larger problem. The larger enemy is ISIS, and the larger and the other larger en enemy is Iran, and the larger problem is the United States. And for that reason, they have been willing to set aside their antipathy towards the ruling family in Qatar and their antipathy towards the AKP, the Islamist government in Turkey, in order to unite against ISIS and against Iran in Syria. And they see the fall of Assad then being a huge blow to, to Iran as much as it is a fulfillment of their other political aspirations. That's true. The problem is that the Saudis aren't really looking further than the end of their nose on this one. It is, it is only a tactical victory. The question of what comes afterwards is something that neither they nor, frankly, we here in Washington have, have begun to think about. Mm -hmm. We have two capitals now at, in turmoil, uh, Sana'a and Damascus, and two civil wars simultaneous. I'll set aside Iraq for the moment, okay. although we could include that. These two capitals, it looks like if we were playing Game of Thrones, Danielle, Saudi Arabia has two pressure points on Tehran and it can go back and forth. Is that uh, credible? Is that what Saudi Arabia means to do? Will it, can Iran stand up to uh, defending two capitals at once? It's funny, I used exactly the same analogy in a, in a war game that I was participating in about Iran today. It is a lot like Game of Thrones. And the answer is that the Saudis, frankly, 
don't have to my mind the capacity that the Iranians have they don't have the determination um, they don't have the military uh, ability and they don't have the reach that being said they are not uh, they are not an impotent power they have chosen in years past to really downplay their abilities the question is now as they stand up as they stand up to the Iranians in in Yemen as they stand up to the Iranians in Syria and elsewhere is it going to to make a difference, or is it really just going to be a, an ankle biting exercise? And I don't think we know. You have said that you thought that the fall of Assad would be positive, uh, and yet we don't know who who would take over. Is your assessment now that his days are in fact numbered? That the reports about Idlib, these other uh, developments, will in fact see an end to the Assad regime? Idlib is a large city and province that's fallen to Al Nusra Front, oh, which is Al Qaeda, right. and yes. puts them on the outskirts right. of Damascus. That's right. No, no, no. And so, so it's not just the Idlib province that's fallen, but they've also seen a lot of setbacks in in recent months in, in Dara in the south and right. and and elsewhere throughout the country. So we are seeing a changing dynamic in Syria. I, I don't want to say, because I, I, I've thought it before and I've been wrong, I, I don't want to say that these are Assad's last days, but I think that he's in a much worse position than he has been for a couple of years. And uh, I think that on top of everything else, what we've always assessed is that Assad will fall, not so much when the enemy makes advances, but when his own Alawi people decide that he's too much of a liability and i think he's getting closer to that point they pull the plug on him but does this mean also that that iran will not let hezbollah go into a war with israel now let the current tensions there explode because they need those forces backing assad Uh, 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 hezbollah is a terrorist army in lebanon that is loyal to tehran and is fighting in the syrian civil war in favor of assad please go ahead daniel So, I think that the Iranians are not stupid. The Iranians look at Assad, and when they need to, when they absolutely need to, they will detach themselves from him and his fortunes, and they will stay with the proxy armies that they have built, uh, armies like Hamas, the terrorist group in in the West Bank and Gaza, and uh, and Hezbollah, the terrorist group that has been fighting alongside Assad, that is Lebanon-based, but has been fighting in Syria. They have created for themselves very powerful, I think well-reinforced enclaves in southern Syria on the Lebanese and the Israeli borders that the Iranians and Hezbollah will not be willing to give up. And I suspect that what will happen when things shake out is that is that they won't be forced to, that, that Syria will instead break apart, perhaps not de jure, but de facto into mm-hmm. these terrorist enclaves of Iranians, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. My understanding is that the Iran- Iranians promote themselves as the regional hegemon, and that means they want to be able to reach all the way to the Mediterranean, as well as to the Hindu Kush and all the way to the Gulf of Aden. The loss of Assad, that in some fashion severely abridges Tehran's empire. Does that damage their ability to maintain power in Tehran, to lose out like that? Losing Assad is, is a big blow to them. They have gone further than I think many of us believe that they would in their defense of, of him uh, at a point where it really it, it, it felt that they should have abandoned him. Um, and so having doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down on, on Bashar al-Assad, if he is defeated or he is severely set back, that will be a loss, but not just not just the loss of, of, of Syria, not just the territorial loss, but the loss of face to the Iranians in the region. It will be a big setback to their ambitions. Uh, Daniel Pletka is Senior Vice President for Foreign and Defense Policy Studies at the American Enterprise Institute, Malcolm Honline Conference of Presidents, Major American Jewish Organizations. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>